All right, you guys. So the plan for today's episode is to go hit the thrift stores. I want to head out there, you know, hit up a couple of different shops and see what we could find because I feel like during the holiday season, there's always a lot more to be had out there. But that's kind of the plan for today's episode, you guys. We're going to have sort of like a laid back and chill day. It's super gloomy and foggy outside, which I absolutely love uh, here in the Bay Area. When it gets gloomy like this, the weather is usually really, really nice. And so I think I'm going to make some coffee before we head out, finish up my work here, and then uh, see what we could find today in the thrift stores. Okay, let's go. giving me like this jolt of energy right now. Whew. All right, let's get in there, man, and let's see if we can find anything. The, uh, this black one here with yeah, the yeah, dog. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh my god, you guys, check this out. Nikon One Touch L35 AF right here. Well, it's the same thing as the L35 AF. Got the Burger King initials. <laughs> This is a great find, man. First find of the day right here for 20 bucks. You gotta be kidding me. Oh, man. I cannot believe that. I've actually been looking for an L35 AF for such a long time. If you guys seen the last thrifting video that I did, this was one of the cameras that I wanted to freaking find. And we found one today. We're definitely going to scoop this up right here. <laughs> what a way to start the day, guys. I am so freaking juiced right now. All right, let's go. You like me? All right, so the only weird thing about the L30, or excuse me, the Nikon One Touch is that it uses a really weird battery. Uh, whereas like the L35s would use a uh, AA battery. That one takes kind of similar to like a 2CR5 where the batteries are kind of conjoined in a plastic casing. So it's going to be a little bit of a struggle to find that today. You might have to head out to the battery store. We're going to go check out this little plastic section uh, before we move on. Look at this, y'all. Man, look at this thing. This is crazy. Check this thing out, y'all. Instamatic M18 movie outfit for Super 8. Plus the Super 8 camera. Look at that. 1496. That is unbelievable right here, man. If you're into Super 8, you should definitely pick this up. But I'm not into that stuff, so I'm gonna leave it for someone else. Someone who could get much more better use out of it than me. All right, gang, so we found a ton of stuff. I'm gonna show you guys really quick all of the things that we did find. The first one that I wanna show you is something that's hella weird looking. Minolta 110 Zoom. I've never seen this camera in my life. It kind of looks almost flat, if you will. Check out that little Minolta bag right there, and they're asking 25 bucks for it. So that was the first thing. Then I found this little Canon PowerShot SX260HS. Kind of insane, man, for six bucks. Not bad at all. Then we found this guy right here. This is one of the older looking Canon point and shoots I've ever seen. This is a Canon Sure Shot with a 24 slash 48 millimeter lens, such a weird combination. But the body itself looks like it's in really, really clean condition. Uh, and then probably the weirdest find of all, another Minolta camera here with a bunch of different rolls of film. Uh, we got a Minolta Freedom Zoom 110. I'm gonna look around, decide which ones to keep and which ones to put back. 
Uh, but so far, like I said, it is packed in the thrifts today. So well, you want to pay now? Yeah, I'm ready to pay. Thank you. Yo, I spent way too much time in there, but the finds just kept coming. But I must have spent a good maybe hour, hour and a half just scouring the store. Um, but there's still four other stores that I want to go and check out. So uh, let's go do that. Let's go. <laughs> Hopefully the luck can keep on coming. Thank you for calling Batteries Plus. Hello, this is Brenda. What can I help you with? Hey, Brenda. I just wanted to see if you guys had the CR-P2 batteries in stock. P2? P2, yeah. Hang on just a sec. Here. Okay. Can I put you in hold again? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. No problem. Yes, we do have some of those in stock. Uh, how many do you need? Honestly, probably just one. Just one? Yeah. Okay, how much are the unit cost? Uh, Let's see. Uh, the unit cost is 1899 a piece. Okay, that's not too bad. All righty. Awesome. Okay. Uh, All right. I'll be in this afternoon. Thank you. All right. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. Yeah, they got to clean up. How much is this one? Oh, I see. Okay. Good. I know that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Come back Thursday. You'll be able to go out if they get somebody up. Oh, no. Maybe I'll do this in a minute. Ooh, Oakland. A photographic journey through Oakland, though? Let's check this out. Look at that. You're looking it up right now? Yeah. All right. You gotta subscribe, though. That's one. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. I'm just not doing. I'm um. Yeah. I usually subscribe. Hello. Hello. So, um, I called earlier about a CRP2 battery. Yes. All right. I'm actually using it for an old film camera. Oh, they're starting to use those for a lot of different things now, so. Well, that's awesome, man. I can use my old camera. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Have a good one. All right, you too. Pretty sure you go this side up. All right, guys, so I just had a little mini heart attack because <laughs> I put the camera together, I put the battery in, I flipped it around a couple of times because it wasn't working. And for a minute there, I was convinced that I bought a dead camera. Then I learned a little trick from my friend. I smacked the hell out of it. <laughs> and here it is, you guys, it's working now. So I don't know if you guys can see it. There's a little light on the inside of the viewfinder right there. Um, and it's actually firing, man. So, you know, sometimes you just need to we're good to go. So I'm gonna hit up the last spot and then call it a day. All right, gang, so it's a completely different day, but I wanted to come back to the thrifts because I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit unsatisfied with just finding those two. So we're back at the first spot here. Um, and again, like I said, it's a couple days later, so we're gonna see if they restocked anything. All right, gang, so this is the stuff we kind of just found in the hidden section here. Check this out, this is like a disc camera, but honestly, I'm more intrigued with just kind of this little brown case here. Then we found this dope little Nikon zoom camera and this one was actually going for $4.98. So I'm gonna actually pick this one up. And something that I actually wanted to try out was this little Canon digital elf camera. And the reason why these kind of intrigued me is not because of the megapixel count, it only has six megapixels, but it actually has a viewfinder built in on the top. These are all made in Japan and my buddy Gable put me on these and so I wanna Probably pick this up, try it out, and see how it works out for a video. Four dollars and ninety-eight cents. Thank you for shopping with us. Don't forget to take your receipt and your bags.
<laughs> there is no way this is happening. <laughs> oh my goodness. I never thought we'd ever have a thrift adventure this successful. I mean, I'm about to show you guys everything that we got, but it's insane just how many cameras, especially with the two that we found that are very similar, uh, we found within such a short you know, amount of time, three days, usually when I go, I usually strike out. Uh, let me get set up here and then uh, I'll show you guys everything that is inside of today's thrift bag. Whew. All right guys, so, all in all, total, this is, again, one of the most successful thrift sessions I've ever had. You have five cameras in this bag. All right, so starting out with the first thing in this bag, um, this was from today's find. This is a pack of Fujifilm Superior 400. Um, and this expired here in 2008. So obviously it's expired already, but it can still be salvaged, you know, because it's in 2008, which means we need to go ahead and uh, overexpose by two stops. But as long as I shoot it two stops overexposed at 100 ISO, I think I will be completely fine. Five rolls of film for two bucks, you really can't beat that. That's less than 50 cents per roll of film. And usually I am not a huge proponent of digital kind of point and shoot film, or <laughs> point and shoot cameras, I should say. I have a GR3 and that pretty much does um, everything that I need it to, but uh, a couple of weeks ago, my buddy Gable actually put me on these smaller cameras. Um, they're the Canon PowerShot ELF cameras. And uh, what's really interesting about these kind of older looking point and shoots is that one, uh, it has six megapixels, which is plenty. <laughs> Our phones have more megapixels than that. But it's not the megapixel count. I think it's the size of it, but also that it has a small little viewfinder here on the back side that you can actually look inside of. So uh, I'm gonna do some testing, you know, see if this lives up to the hype. Uh, we also got a little charger, but funny thing is it didn't even come with a charge or a battery, I should say. Um, and if you guys wanna know the exact model of this, you know, Canon PowerShot camera, it is the PowerShot SD600. So uh, who knows? If you guys wanna see a video done on this camera, definitely leave that in the comment section down below. Um, but as for now, again, it's something that I don't know much about. All right, so now in the bag, all we have left are film cameras. And part of today's theme was just point and shoots. You know, there were really no SLR cameras out there that were worth it. And so we ended up only really finding point and shoots. And I'm not complaining because we have some fire in here, man. All right, so the first one here is a little Nikon point and shoot. Uh, and this one right here is a Zoom Nikon, and I think I picked this up for $4.98. Now, this one right here, you guys, is the Nikon Touch Zoom. Uh, very similar to, like, most of the Nikon kind of point-and-shoot zoom cameras back in the day. It has a 35 to 60 millimeter lens, also has an interesting little macro mode. Um, and for the most part, you know, the build itself feels very plasticky. So... <laughs> It, it actually works and it actually fires. And so that's always a plus right there. Something that would be a great addition for somebody who is maybe going on vacation and wants to make photographs, but just doesn't want to take the photography like extremely serious. You pop one of these in your bag and you have 35 millimeter to 60 millimeter play around with, um, and you can capture your entire trip on film. And so I'm a huge advocate of these, you know, more simple, plastic, fantastic zoom film cameras, because I think they get the job done. And I think that Anybody who buys one of these uh, won't be disappointed as long as it's intended for just kind of like recreational and fun use. Now the next camera up you guys is a camera that I am very, very excited about. Um, basically because it's one of the only film cameras that I know that has a native 28 millimeter lens. Now, this camera folks is the Canon SureShot with a 28 millimeter slash 48 millimeter lens. Now, this is a very interesting camera, you guys. As you guys can see here on the bottom, there's a little switch that opens up for you and the lens kind of pops out. There was a cover over that lens and basically you turn it off just by closing it again. Um, I don't know if you guys can see that there, but on the front lens cover, it says 28 to 48 millimeter, which is great because uh, it's prime lenses. You know, you have a prime 28 millimeter lens and a prime 48 millimeter lens. What really kind of fascinates me about this is that when you open up the backside here, there's a ton of moving parts inside. So as you can see, you know, very, very plain Jane, you have your window here that is gonna expose the film. Let's go ahead and turn it on real quick. 
So one thing that's really interesting is that when you switch between the focal lengths, there's a little kind of magnifying glass looking piece inside of there. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, and that thing will actually move in and out when you adjust. So there is the 48 millimeter focal length and there is the 28. I'm really excited to see how the 28 millimeter looks because if the lens on this thing is sharp, I mean, it says right there, Canon 28 millimeter lens. I think this is going to be a camera that can definitely, definitely be worth getting. That's for sure. So the Canon sure shot. If you guys have any information on this camera, leave it in the comment section down below. I am stoked about this one right here. All right, guys. And now for the main event right here, we found two cameras that are of extremely high caliber. And it's funny because in my very last thrift episode, I mentioned that this particular camera that we found today that we found two of uh, was a camera that I absolutely love and regretted selling. All right, so the first one that we found came in this little black case, fairly tall case, you know, taller than normal. Uh, but when you open it up here through the Velcro, it comes out at the top. And then included with the camera itself is the original manual. But that camera, folks, is this one right here. This is the Nikon One Touch, also known as the L35AF. Now the Nikon L35 AF is one of the most iconic point and shoot camera. Now the L35 AF went through a couple of different versions. A lot of them are just called the one touch, but then you have the actual Nikon L35 AF. Then there's the AF2. Uh, there's a whole bunch of them, but this one right here is in super clean condition. To be able to find one like this um, is actually pretty rare. You know, every other L35 AF that I've found, They've been pretty beat up and they have been somewhat, I don't wanna say neglected, but not kept in this good condition. The L35 Nikon One Touch right here. I think I paid, yeah, 20 bucks for this, you guys. That is an absolute steal. Now, what's funny is after finding this one right here, I went to a couple of thrift stores that day, couldn't find anything else. And so I went for day two and then I went for day three today. And the first thrift store that we went to, we actually found the same camera but different versions so this is the nikon one touch i'm going to put them side by side just so you guys can get a comparison but they both have 35 millimeter 2.8 lenses and the design again is just a little bit different slightly different this one has more of a grip where this one is um i feel like it's a little bit more like a, a modern type of feel but for this one right here, this is the L35 AF that I know. This was the one that I started with. Um, and I got this one right here, you guys, for 13 bucks. Again, another steal, but I'm absolutely stoked, man, to be able to have both of these in my possession. Um, and I'm curious to see, you know, which one actually I end up keeping, because I think I might want to get rid of one of them. Um, with that said, both of the lenses on every L35 AF I've shot were extremely sharp and i'm talking you know maybe even sharper than the stylus epic that i owned at one point you know with that said these are solid solid cameras here it is the two l35 afs you know what are the odds of finding two of these within a three day span man so that's gonna wrap it up for today's thrift episode i hope you guys enjoyed your time here on the channel um and if you guys want to see more episodes on thrifting or if you guys have any questions or maybe even video suggestions on any of the things that we found in today's episode leave a comment down below because I'm always looking uh, to put out content that suits the viewers of this channel. And with that said, I really appreciate everybody who has been sticking around uh, and just watching the videos, man. You know, it really means a lot to me to know that uh, what I'm doing here, you guys are enjoying. And uh, without you guys, there would really be no opportunity for me to even make these videos. So thank you guys so much, man, for tuning into this episode. I'll see you guys in the next one, as always. Minolta game. Whew.